Devin Haney, what is next with Devin Haney? Ryan Garcia saying that he is the face of boxing and reality saying that there's a way that Devin Haney can come back from this. We'll see if he actually does it. But man, Ryan Garcia has stole all of Devin Haney's cookies. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fanon. In this video, we're going to talk about Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney. We got a big fight coming up this weekend, though, with Canelo Alvarez fighting Jaime Munguia. And uh, since Canelo Alvarez is in the later throes of his career and it looks like he's not really fighting anybody, any major competition, even though, hey, man, I'm not sleeping on Jaime Munguia in this fight. He goes, hey, man. I was kind of sleeping on Ryan Garcia when Ryan Gar before Ryan Garcia thumped up Devin Haney. However, uh, if for some reason Canelo Alvarez loses that fight, this whole conversation about the face of boxing uh, is is a live and active one where Ryan Garcia is now saying that it's him. That is the face of boxing. And he's out there doing a bunch of um, celebrity celebrity appearances. I would call them, you know, B-lister type B-lister type of appearances, uh, A-list and YouTube uh, appearances, though, uh, to try to bolster this claim. And in, in watching this, I just got to tell you, man, man, Devin Haney did a whole lot of promotion for himself <clears throat> that wound up going and working directly for the benefit of Ryan Garcia. It's almost like Devin Haney has been working for Ryan Garcia over the last several years as a result of what, what had transpired uh, on the 20th of April. Now, before I get into that, let me welcome you back. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe. If you've been around a while, thank you. Also, thank you to everybody that supports in the super thanks of videos like this. Matty O, Barbara D and the crew. Thank you. Jeff Miller, Big uh, Big Dre. Thank you. Um, let's get into this, though. Um, Ryan Garcia is definitely has a uh, a legitimate chance to be one of the biggest stars in boxing. And I think that ever since we saw him beat Ryan Devin Haney, you kind of see that in the way that he's staying in the media, the way that he's really is driving the boxing conversations over the last week or so. Of course, we'll see as time goes on how that pans out with the matchups that he has next. But what's going to be really important for him is that he's able to actually continue to win fights. If he's not able to continue to win fights, then that is going to go away. Um, but who it did go away from and what he and what this person needs to do, in my opinion, to get it back uh, is Devin Haney. And he's got to beat somebody that is then somebody does not think that he can beat. That's the only way that Devin Haney is going to get back in that stride that Devin Haney was in before after that performance with um with Ryan Garcia. I mean, you got Devin out here looking bad, man. They got people people selling, showing sweat stains on his on his trunks acting like there's something else. It's just really really rough out there. But it shouldn't be, but if you look at what happened with Ryan Garcia, man, Devin Haney can can do the same thing. Devin what happened with Ryan was Ryan was, you know, Mr. all of this, Mr. all of that talking and people were really interested in him in a fight with uh, Gervonta Davis, Gervonta Davis and he fight. They do big, big numbers. But what happens? Gervonta Davis makes him quit by making him quit. What happens to Ryan Garcia's stock? Ryan Garcia's stock goes down. And did he stay there? No, he did not stay there. He has a fight with Oscar Duarte, a comeback fight at 143 pounds against Oscar Duarte. He gets a knockout. Did he get all the way back? No, but he got back on the winning. He got back in the winning uh, lane and then he gets a fight with 
Devin Haney. Devin Haney, who was on most people's power for pound list, who was a former undisputed champion at 135 pounds, even though I got to tell you that undisputed championship now is looking a little more suspect, as many people had been saying before, but it's looking a little more suspect. However, he was an undisputed champion, a uh, champion with the WBC uh, at 140. Ryan gets in there, beats him. And where's Ryan? At a higher place than he was before he fought, before he fought Gervonta Davis. So it is absolutely possible for Devin Haney to do the same thing. But Devin Haney has got to do what Devin did, do what Ryan Garcia did. You're going to have to beat somebody that nobody thinks you can beat and you'll be back on top. Same thing happened with Muhammad Ali. That's how Muhammad Ali got up there to begin with, beating somebody that nobody thought you could beat. That particular person was uh, Sonny Liston. He did it again when he beat Joe F George Foreman and winds up, winds up getting way back to higher than he ever was after he beat George Foreman. Now, Ryan, uh, Devin Haney has to do the same thing. Devin Haney is not going to be able to go in there and get a win against um, people that he, people, you know, he's not going to be able to fight Roly Romero and get it back or get back to where he on the track to where he wanted to be. It's going to have to be somebody like a Jerron Ennis. I don't even think a Teofimo Lopez fight will necessarily do that for him. Uh, even though the T, even though Teofimo Lopez is definitely a big fight and it could help a lot. But in order to get and do something where somebody really doesn't think you have a chance and which can be like, man, this guy is way better than I thought he was. Maybe it was the weight. Is a guy like Jerron Ennis at 147 pounds plus Devin saying that he he had to really squeeze down those extra three pounds while Ryan Garcia did not sets people up for the conversation of, OK, well, why are you at the weight class? If it's that hard to make the weight right now, not saying that that um, Devin Haynes is the only person to do that, but still. Look, if you have a hard time and you feel drained making that weight, you're going to have to be in a weight that you're real, real comfortable. Um, doesn't look like uh, Devin is going to get a fight with Gervonta Davis. That doesn't seem like it's um, in the works for him. As of right now, the most of the conversation going on around Gervonta Davis and the next big fight that he'll have, as although I got to tell you, people are... Um, over here overlooking uh, Frank Martin, something fierce, uh, is a is a conversation about a fight with Shakur Stevenson. Um, and that is, I do, I personally believe, really is the best fight uh, that could be made uh, at 135 pounds. But I think a guy like Jerron Ennis, and I know people are going to say, oh, Fanon, you're trying to get him killed. Now, I'm not trying to get him killed. I am, I don't believe he will do it. And to be quite honest, I don't believe he'll win. However, if he wants to get back on that track, he's got to do what he said he was doing before, saying, hey, man, I'm out for greatness. I'm looking for greatness. And if you want to be the great, great, you got to look to fight the best. If Devin is having a hard time making 140, he's a 147 pounder. And the best guy at 147 pounds is Jerron Ennis. They're the same age. They roughly the same size. Not a good fight for him in the ring. Doesn't look like it from that anybody would think he could win. But if he can pull that together and get that, hey, man, it won't be Ryan that's the face of boxing. It'll be or Gervonta. It'll be him. Uh, but, you know, we'll see if he actually does that. I doubt it. But for real, that's what I think. Anyway, that's my take on the matter. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Deuces.